January Art Journal page at Creative Art Journaling, Stream of Consciousness. The term stream of consciousness was coined by philosopher and psychologist William James in 1890. It alludes to the raw thoughts and experiences that pass through your mind. In her book, The Artist's Way, Julia Cameron encourages stream of consciousness writing in morning paper exercises. There are links in the description box below. Our January 2014 journal page at Creative Art Journaling was based off of our own stream of consciousness exercise. This video will be in three segments. Part 1, a show and tell of the completed pages. Part 2, an introduction to the project. And Part 3, a process segment in Fast Forward. What was I thinking? Hi there. I have a show and tell. This is the January Creative Art Journaling page that I've completed for our Creative Art Journaling group on Yahoo.com. We've been, every month we have a theme and we swap out a journal page with another person. So this is my page for January of 2014. I need to send it out this afternoon because it's January 31st today. Um, the theme of the page was stream of consciousness. Now stream of consciousness is not a new thought. It was actually created by or coined by a philosopher, William James in the Principles of Psychology in 1890. More recently, there have been exercises by um, Julia Cameron in her book, The Artist's Way. And she inspires creative um, processes in her workshops by stream of consciousness exercises. And um, what it is, is you sit down and, uh, at least in the artist's way, you sit down and the exercise is to set a time limit and just write whatever's in your thought process at the time. So I, uh, on our group exercise, on our group page here, we were supposed to write for three minutes. Well, that wasn't long enough for me. I wanted three pages because I wanted plenty of written material for my art journal page, so I kind of bent the rules a little there. <laughs> so, um, also, when I was reading the definition of stream of consciousness at Wikipedia, I caught the phrase interior monologue. And uh, I have a photograph here of, it's a vintage photograph of, I would imagine this is the, the late 1890s or early 1900s and I happen to have the same photograph twice so I made two pages one to send and one to keep but uh, I I the name of this person was on the back of the photograph and I wanted to salvage that so I wrote her name here and then I also wrote it on the back and because I do not know this person of course she may not <laughs> apply to the phrase uh, stream of consciousness, but for this project she does. Um, and then I picked up on that phrase interior monologue and uh, something in my thought, my own thought process brought forth the phrase silver tongue. So I wrote Lily, her interior monologue sharpened her silver tongue. Silver tongue versus sharp tongue. Silver tongue meaning she knew exactly what to say at the right time. I should write that in here. She knew exactly what to say at the right time. I think I will. I wanted to come back and show you how I did write that phrase. During my show and tell, I was thinking that I should write the phrase, Lily knew what to say. Lily knew the right thing to say at the right time. And so I just jotted that along the margin of my photo here. Lily knew the right thing to say at the right time. And down here, Lily knew the right thing to say at the right time. And then I did the same thing on my, my keeper page. 
right here. I had to kind of pull this ribbon up. I'm going to glue that back down. This is a keeper page, but it says Lily knew the right thing to say at the right time. And then down here, Lily knew the right thing to say at the right time. So um, I just, I used in a couple videos ago, I uploaded an experiment that I've been doing that I call embossed drippage and this page is actually the page that I am going to send out that was done in that video embossed drippage and I really like how the drippage kind of symbolizes the thought processes in our mind how we might be thinking and and you know just the the whole flow of thought so I used as a base of my page, the, the size of the page is 8 by 10, and I used um, watercolor paper, 140 pound watercolor paper. I used some Tim Holtz um, tissue paper on the background. You can see the word amusement in here, and over here is the word time. So I think this the name of that tissue paper, I believe, is for Tim Holtz's terminology. And it has different typed definitions on there. And you collage it on your background, and then you can work over it. I wrote the word interior monologue down here, referencing that phrase that I saw on Wikipedia for stream of consciousness writing. Behind here is actually one of my sheets of paper and you'll see this in my process video after this segment. Um, I had written three, three sheets of, of my thought processes on a particular morning. Then I sprayed over that with dilution spray. And then over that, I sprayed a fixative so that I could actually work with it. And I used that as the base mat here on the front of my page on the back. I put the name Lily over a piece of that scrap paper. I don't know how much you can see that. And then in the background there is some of more of my stream of consciousness writing. I wanted Lily to be documented on this page because her face is on the front. She's kind of one of those um, adoptive relatives. <laughs> she's not a relative of mine, but she's, she's an adoptive relative for my art journal. And then down here, I have strips of that stream of consciousness notebook paper. This is not embossed strippage on the back, but still that stream coming down of my words at the time. So if you're curious to know what I was writing about that day, I was actually writing about creativity, and I was writing about the public school systems in America and my experiences with them and my observations about them. Um, I made a video where I actually read my stream of consciousness thoughts and I'm not sure that I'm going to incorporate it into this. I might incorporate a, a few of my thoughts because I think that's important to understanding the page but then again I'm not sure I, I think if I sat and read three pages of my stream of consciousness writing that it might bore, be very boring. So I might read a paragraph or two out of it when I edit my videos. But I used it as a mat and then I used some wired gold mesh ribbon to as a second mat. And then I used my adopted... Um, relative here, Lily, and then my little phrase. I used a stamp that I've been using in another art journal. This, I don't know what it says. I think it's written in French. Well, I'm pretty sure it's written in French, but I stamped there to carry the text, the, the, um, the theme of text across the photograph. Of course, I left her face. I really left her face alone. I think she's a pretty lady. So that's my journal page. I documented on the back, and I left Lily's name there. 
I also, when I glued these strips down, I was going to tear off the bottom here. But I'm finding that I like these. I did this in another journal, that page that I just posted, where I left the sprockets off of it when I tore it out of my journal. Of course, my, on that page, the sprockets had tears. And I left those on there because I think it just adds a visual element. See, can you see it there? I think, yeah, see? I think that adds a visual element. Now, the person who gets this page, if they don't like that in their journal, they can either fold it up or snip it off. I hope that they leave them there, but they may not want to. So I'll leave that choice up to them. I dyed some ribbon here. I have some what they call tape ribbon, and it was really kind of a light tannish brown with uh, spots of red and, and blue in it, but I wanted it more of a brownish color. I like the ribbon, but I wanted a little bit more of a solid color for these pages, so I dyed it with alcohol inks. And then I just left my own handwriting, uh, nothing fancy. I edged it with um, black metallic paint first with a very thin edging of black metallic. Then I went over that again with my Faber Castell and my alcohol pen and kind of blended in some of the edges. I like how that frames the page and sets it off. So this is the one I'm doing for swap. I, I hope that my swap partner likes it and uh, gets to see this video and understand the process of how it was made. Now I also did another one I made two pages when I was playing with my embossed drippage, and this is the page for myself. I did this embossed drippage in a, in a different way, and it really was not quite as successful. But uh, I decided to go ahead, since I had two photographs, and make a keeper page for me. And up here, there's the word memory. This is that Tim Holtz terminology tissue paper clodged on the background. And here again is my stream of consciousness writing, which is my base mat and the gold mesh ribbon and my adopted relative of Lily. Interior monologue. I was playing with um, doing some image transfer in the background here. I've kind of rubbed it all out in the process of doing this page. But you can see some of it very, very faint in the background here. This is actually where I was playing with doing the image transfer. But in the process of do, working on the back of this page, I've kind of have really lightened it. So I collaged some other pieces. This is actually, I used all three pages of that stream of consciousness writing. And I collaged some of my pieces down here. Of course, made my journaling spot and then put Lily's name on there because I really want her to be credited with this. So I have two pages done. This one is for the keeper, and this one is to send out. This is the end of the show and tell. The next segment is an introduction to the project where I set up the pages and discuss my stream of consciousness writing. Hi there. I am beginning to work on my January 2014 art journal page swap and uh, the theme for this month is stream of consciousness now first I want to explain that our journal pages is are 8 by a 10 I have two pieces of watercolor paper that I worked on for another swap that I just did some spray wash over through a tablecloth and then blotted it out. I have a pinkish colored one. I'm not sure how well that shows up for you and a gray one. So I'm gonna use these as the background for my pages. And I wanna explain a little bit about stream of consciousness. There's a book out by Julia Cameron called The Artist's Way. She teaches creative creativity and the artist's way, the book is A Spiritual Path to Higher Creativity, A Course in Discovering and Recovering Your Creative Self. This book has been published in, I think, I believe she has a couple books out. This book was published in, let me find the copyright date here. 
I can't believe there's not a copyright on these pages. Here it is. I'm looking for the date. Oh, the first date, the first publication date was 1992, and then there's a republished date of 2002. So this is 2014, so I'm sure she's got other books, and I know she has a website out, and I will we'll, I will reference that. And among the artist community, here's Julia Cameron here, Among here's her website, www.theartistway.com. I'll put that in my description box. But she is um, known uh, within the art community as uh, being a teacher of cre creativity and getting people back to finding their creative path, especially if they have are blocked. And one of her tools, and you can read probably read about this on her website, is stream of consciousness writing. And I'm not going to go into the entire details of how to do that. You can visit her website, buy her book, and uh, explore that yourself. I would recommend it, especially if you are blocked creativity, creatively. Whether you are a beginning artist and are striving to get those ideas out, or if you're an accomplished artist and are blocked or looking for new paths of creative effort. <laughs> so I'm probably somewhere in between there. I would not say that I am, have reached the heights of accomplishment yet, <laughs> but I'm getting there. But um, our art journal page, the theme is stream of consciousness. And in order to do that, our instructions were to write three pages of stream of consciousness writing and then use it on our art journal page. I do not do stream of consciousness writing every day. That is not something I do. Will I do it after I did this exercise? I may do it occasionally, but I find that the very effort that it takes for me to do that um, it's not something that it, it bites into my day and uh, I, I can just hear Julia saying to me it should be wet the way you start your day but I feel like I do a stream of consciousness exercise in another more spiritual way that works for me and uh, so I think I do stream of, of consciousness or maybe even stream of subconsciousness um, so I think I do the exercise, but not in the way that she sets it out here. But I highly recommend that you do try this. And it, you may find that it works for you. I'm going, I sat down this morning and wrote out my stream of consciousness. I wrote out three pages of text. I'm going to use this text. You can see I, I've written out three entire, I, I got this little notebook at, Actually, I got it at the thrift store. It cost me 40 cents for this. <laughs> I highly recommend that you visit your thrift stores, too. 40 cents for a, a, a blank notebook page, like book like this. It is well worth it. I like the appearance of this text written page, of these text written pages. Doesn't that make you want to tear them up and do art on them and put them, collage them on a page? Yeah. At this point, I'm just going to read you the very last paragraphs of my stream of consciousness writing. My day fills up very fast. I am never bored with life. I've grown beyond boredom. Thank you. My mouth savors the coffee flavor. Shall I make another cup? I have a copy of the new Somerset Art Journal magazine. Yes, I have time to read from it yet, over coffee. I cannot wait to make my January 2014 stream a consciousness page. Boy, even reading that, my voice became scratchy. <coughs> but I do like the look of this text. 
And for that reason, not for the reason of mind dumping, <coughs> for that reason I may go out and do more of this in this book. I used a cheap pin that I bought at the Dollar Tree store. I don't think I have it with me. I'll maybe, no. This is a permanent marker that I bought at the Dollar Tree store, but you can buy gel pens. And I was very pleased that it wrote legibly on my page here. I'll probably buy some more of those. I was expecting the ink to be faint. So now I'm going to tear these pages out of my book because these are going to be used on my art journal page. And in the next video, I'm going to start altering them. And I think I'll leave some of the text legible, but uh, I'm going to, you can see I've got three pages of text to work with. And I have a plan. I know what I'm going to do with it. So I'll probably use some of it, maybe not all of it. Maybe I'll do two pages and keep one for myself. I certainly have enough to work with. I may add some more elements to the page too. You can find this book, A Course in Discovering and Recovering Your Creative Self, The Artist's Way, A Spiritual Path to Higher Creativity by Julia Cameron. And go visit her website, www.theartistsway.com. I would really recommend that you do that. Spend some time reading through this. You don't have to read it word for word, but uh, I found it a very interesting reading, and I, I will go back to this on occasion. This is the end of the introduction. The next segment is a fast-forward segment where I discuss the pages as I am creating them. Okay, you see I'm ready to start on my Stream of Consciousness journal page. I start off by taking some Terminology Tissue Paper by Tim Holtz, and I'm just tearing off some pieces to fit the pages, and I'm going to collage them down. I do that on both of the pages. I'm using Liquitex Matte Medium. So I have a nice textural background on both pages over my lightly sprayed doily pages. Now I'm just trimming off the edges, sanding down the sides to kind of smooth them off. I do that on both pages. Now I'm getting out my elements and deciding what I want to do, and I think that I want to try stamping with some bubble wrap and I do that, but it just adds a little color to the pages. I don't really have the bubble wrap showing. Then I get my text block and I stamp uh, both of my pictures with the text block. Just adds to the whole textural stream of consciousness. Now I'm going to do some embossed strippage, and you've seen this in a previous video. This is actually uh, one of my experimental pages before I found out which technique worked the best for me. You can see here where I apply the glycerin to the page and then put the UT embossing powder right over it and then try to cause both of those to drip down and it works but it's not quite as pretty as the other page that you'll see coming up in the one I actually did my video on. So this whole technique for me was an experimental process deciding which worked the best. It's a very messy process and my pages get very oily, but that oil I find does dry off if you buff it off and uh, it really is neat to see all that drippage embossed. You can see now where I'm just kind of buffing off some of my pages there. I remove the tape. I t mask out a couple words that I wanted to keep. 
Now I'm going to do the other page, and I'm much happier with this page, and this is actually the one I showed in the video, a couple of videos uh, previous to this one. You've already seen this page being created, but I included it in this video because I actually did that for the Stream of Consciousness page. You can see I let the glycerin drip down the page first, and then I applied the I'm using UT, uh, Ultra Thick Embossing Powder, to the drips after they've already dripped down my page. I'm very happy with this technique. I will say that I glazed over it, and uh, I also applied a sealer over that to help prevent that, where the very thick drippage to chip off the page. Now I'm just buffing everything off, removing my masks over the words that I wanted to keep and uh, here again it's a messy process and the page gets oily but if you buff it off and let it dry it really uh, creates a very nice effect and I think the stream of consciousness background just really goes with the whole stream of consciousness on the page and here I'm using that tablecloth you've seen me do this before to over my um, stream of consciousness writing that I did on the notebook paper. And I'm doing that to partly blur out my text because I really don't want it readable. I just want it in the background. And that ink will do that. And Dilutions is a very um, movable ink. It will move with water. And uh, I I really like the effect of that pattern across my, my text there. Now I'm getting out the pictures again and I have some wire mesh ribbon that I mount those pictures on and I poke hole, well, I'm, you can see where I'm tearing my stream of consciousness text to create a mat and then I poke holes in all four corners of there and I'm going to tie that together with some tape ribbon that I have. I'm just preparing the pictures and there's the tape ribbon. Now decide that ribbon is too light for my page. You can see it's kind of a variegated ribbon but it's really too light for my taste. So I get out my alcohol inks and put on some plastic gloves. You want to do that if you do this technique because it's very messy and uh, I apply I believe that's a stream blue and a watermelon and a ginger to it and that will dry after it's all dried, here I am working with my pictures again, and now I'm going to, um, well, I'm figuring out how I want to put the word lily on there. I set that aside and decide that I'm going to apply that ribbon to the picture, and I thread it through there, and as you can see, as I thread it through, I make sure that that ribbon does some twists. See how I twisted that ribbon after I put it through each one? And I do uh, a double threading of that ribbon just to make it, I guess it just adds an, an extra element to my page. Um, and it also serves to hold all three of the elements together. You see when I flip that picture over you see my stream of consciousness writing on the back. So I'm very happy with that and I'm placing it, figuring out where I want everything to go and uh, get out my weld bond glue and glue everything down and put it underneath some heavy books and I set it aside actually a couple days to dry and now I'm working with the name of that lady on the back of that picture uh, the lady's name is Lily and because this is sort of an adopted relative uh, the picture I got at an antique store I want to preserve her name uh, I have altered the pictures, but I want the name of Lily to be retained on this page. So I decide to do that by using some scraps from my notebook papers, and then I'm tracing around the words Lily. I have a chipboard, I, I believe it's from Seven Gypsies alphabet set. And I trace around them, and then I get out my blue sapphire metallic paint and paint out her name on there. Very happy with that. You'll see me working with uh, this twice 
one for each page and I'll adjust it several times before I finally come to a conclusion. Now I'm working on the back of the page that I'm going to swap out and I just tear some strips out of one of my remaining pages of the stream of consciousness writing and just let it stream down my page, clodge it down vertically just to give it again simulating a stream of consciousness. I think the embossed drippage adds to that effect and the way that I collage these strips down on the page are visual elements. Now I've done some work off, um, offline to the back of my keeper page. I collaged down some of the text and I played with some ink transfers. You saw that in another video too. Now I'm just adding some um, light blue wash across both pages and I don't really have a quote that I'm going to use on there but I looked up uh, stream of consciousness on wiki and I picked out the phrase interior monologue so I jot that down there and then underneath of Lily's picture I wrote um, her um, Lily her interior monologue sharpened her silver tongue and silver tongue meaning she she knew exactly what to say at the right time she had the right words on the tip of her tongue which is something I don't always have you see I enhanced the word Lily again on the back and I'm just not really too careful about how I write the words on there because this is a stream of consciousness page and I'm not I'm writing I'm not too careful about how my handwriting looks except for I don't like my document <laughs> spot on the back my journaling spot on the back and you can see I'm working with that in a couple of different ways I'm playing with some alcohol inks in my biggie pen and I'm just adding some um, black wash around the edges there on the front and really at this point I'm just kind of playing with the page but I'm, I'm happy with how it's turning out. I think the page is accomplishing exactly what I wanted it to. I don't like the journaling spot, so I get out some black gesso and just gesso out and create a black journaling spot. I'm much happier with that. It looks like the word, the name Lily is kind of just sitting across it. And then I just journal the name of the swap and the date and everything. Now I'm working on my, this is the page I'm going to keep for myself and I do something similar on um, the page that I'm keeping for myself, interior monologue, and then I'm enhancing the word Lily on the back and framing it off with a black biggie pen. And there's my journaling spot on the back. Just drying everything off and I'm very happy with how these pages have turned out in the long run. I hope that you've enjoyed watching me create these pages. If you have, please subscribe to my channel. I will be doing more journal pages and I will see you on the next page.